If you will turn to Mark chapter 11, there was read in your hearing verse 3. Mark chapter 11, there was read in your hearing verse 3. Let me know you have it. Let me know if you don't have it. Because they're not going to help you today. You see that, don't you? Anyone don't have it? Still turning? Let us read the word of God. The Bible says, And if any man say unto you, Why do you this? Say ye that the Lord hath need of him, and straightway he will send him hither. Our message today is entitled, He hath need of you. He hath need of you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much yet again. Dear Lord, we've come to the uh, part of the service where we wait for fresh bread from heaven. Dear God, I pray now that you'll remove me, dear Father, that no man may see or hear your servant, but may they hear the voice from heaven. Issue forth from your holy lips, dear Jesus, on the wings of angels and usher through this place through the Holy Spirit. Dear Father, I beg you now, allow your work to be done. Remove all distractions, I beg you, dear Father. Take the devil, bind him hand and foot, set him aside in the corner, dear Lord, and allow your work to go forth with much power this day. May we leave here understanding what you'll have for us to do. And may we leave, dear Father, with conviction, that thing will we do. I beg you, dear Father, may the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable and pleasing in your holy and precious sight. This is my prayer that the church say, amen and amen. A very interesting scripture. This particular passage can be found in all four Gospels. Now, oftentimes, as you go throughout the Gospels, you'll see that there are different uh, accounts of Jesus' experience in, as it relates to his ministry that are recorded by each Gospel writer. But now, every now and then, you'll find that they all document the exact same thing. However, they have a, their own perspective on how that thing took place. Not that it contradicts, but it gives you a different perspective as a release relates to each thing. Are you with me? And this particular passage relates to Jesus entering into Jerusalem. Now, I want you to understand the backdrop. Now, if you will, you can look at Matthew chapter 21. You can also look at John chapter 12, and you can take a look at Luke chapter 19, and you'll find there all the different accounts as it relates to this particular scripture. Now, if you pay attention to the book of John, you'll see in John chapter 12, as it speaks about Jesus entering into Jerusalem, just before that in chapter 11, it discusses the death of Lazarus. Are you with me? Now, this is very interesting because when Lazarus died and was dead for how many days? Cheat sheet, right? Dead for four days. Jesus made his way down, and we understand how the story went. How many people were here for um, campus advent? You, you were here? And so you remember we talked about that? Mm -hmm. see, how they, see how it just kind of went real quiet? How many people were here? Okay. Oh, I, mm -hmm. Friday night, let me, let me clear it up, let me, let me, I won't put you out there. How many here were, were here on Friday night for campus advent? You, you, do you remember we discussed John chapter 11? A little bit. John chapter 11 discusses a very interesting point. Lazarus was dead and they had a great feast at Simon the leper's house, not to be confused with Simon Peter the disciple, but Simon the leper's house and they had a great feast and Jesus Christ was there. Now, let me uh, just, just understand this. At no time before had, uh, had there been in their experience someone who was dead for four days and had been resurrected back to life that they had an opportunity to sit down and speak with. Are you with me? Now, I don't know if I'd have went to the dinner. That's just me. <laughs> Brother man was dead. Now he's alive. I don't know if I want to be there right that moment. You know what I mean? Maybe you guys go ahead and speak to him, see how that all works out, and I'll, you know, just get the report. 
And then, you know, I'll report back later with, you know, what my find. But, but they all showed up, and the Bible says Jesus was there, but they weren't paying too much attention to Jesus. They were more so focused on Lazarus and his experience. Are you with me? Then there were others who were focusing a little bit on, on Simon the leper because he had leprosy, but he was now healed. Are you with me? And then there's Jesus, who's getting all this attention from one woman in particular, Mary Magdalene, and she breaks the alabaster box. Oh, y'all remember that night, don't you? She broke the alabaster, and she began to anoint my Savior upon his head and his feet. And then she began to cry when she considered what he had done for her. I want you to understand the experience at Simon the leper's house. But when people saw this thing, they were blown away. Now, yes, there were some who, who couldn't stand him for it, but then there were others who said, surely this man must be a man of God. He raised the dead back to life. And so in John chapter 12, it gives you the same account of what takes place here in Matthew, uh, Mark chapter 11 and Matthew chapter 21 and Luke chapter 19. You'll see a breakdown of Jesus now entering into Jerusalem. But... I didn't come to talk about him entering into Jerusalem some days before his crucifixion. What I want to talk about is the manner in which he did it. Because there's something to the way Jesus does stuff. You ever been around some people and they kind of do some stuff and it's kind of like they're real goofy? You don't know any goofy people? You know some goofy? Okay, right? So, so, and some people just goofy. They just kind of do stuff. It's kind of like they're just goofy, just clumsy goofy. Just look at them. And then you have other people who, they, they could do the exact same thing, but the way they do it, they just got that smoothness about them. You know what I mean? Just kind of, they walk into a room and it's just like. And it's, they just have that suaveness about them, just, to, just so, so, so fresh and so clean. Just, you know, the way they, the way they move, it's, it's as though their clothes are catching up. To go before them, and then they move into that move, and and, 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 kind of, and I can imagine when Jesus does stuff, he just does things the way that any brother just would sit and say, "Man, I wish I could move like that brother there." He just something different about him. When Jesus was getting ready to enter into Jerusalem, he didn't just go ahead and walk into Jerusalem. What he did instead was, he said, you know what, here's what I'm going to do. He stopped where he was. The Bible says he was right there in the Mount of Olives. And he turned to two of his disciples and he said, do me a favor. Go down into the village that's right next to us. When you go down to the village, you're going to see a colt and a donkey. I want you to follow me closely. Now, in Mark, Mark doesn't talk about the donkey. Now, understand a colt is just a young donkey. All right. All right. Y'all trying to act brand new today. I see what's going on. <laughs> I'm about to call you out. Now, I know there's one person here that's from Brooklyn. But for the rest of you, somebody from the country in here. <laughs> somebody got some country roots. Somebody in, don't don't raise your hand. It's all right. You don't have to raise your hand. But somebody know about a donkey and a colt and a foal. Some, uh -huh, I see your hand. It's all right. That's all I want to see. One person. That's all I need is a witness. Now, the donkey, now, now you have a donkey there, and the donkey gives birth and has a colt. Now, the colt is under one year of age. Are you with me? Now, that coat that's under one year of age, Jesus says, I want you to go into the village that's next to where we are and find that coat with the donkey and bring them both to me. Now, very interesting. Jesus wants both of them. Now, Jesus is bad and all. Revelation said he got seven eyes. Right? But he's not going to ride both of them at the same time. You know what I'm saying? But he's only going to ride one, but he says, bring them both to me. Now, I want you to understand the concept. This cult has not been separated from his mother yet. Are you with me? So Jesus says, bring the cult to me, but I want you to make sure that the cult makes the journey with the mother. Mm -hmm. Bring them both to me, and when you bring them both to me, I'm only looking, I really want the cult, but bring them both. And you will find them both tied up. I'm not making it up. 
The Bible says in verse 2, go your way into the village over against you. And as soon as you enter into it, you shall find a colt tied whereon never man sat. Loose him and bring him. Now, you may be saying, okay, he said him and him and them. Him, right? Now, remember I told you, you could find this account in other gospels from different perspectives. Mark is focusing on the end result. Matthew, however, says something a little different. Matthew says in 21 verse 2, it says, go into the village over against you and straightway you shall find an ass tied and a colt with what? Her, loose them and bring them where? Unto what? Me. The Bible doesn't contradict. It simply clears things up as you go along. Line upon line, precept upon precept. Here a little, there a little. Are you with me? So he says, go over to the village. You'll find both of them. Bring them both to me. They both will be tied up. But I, I didn't come to talk to you about that yet. It says, and, and, and you have to go back to Mark. You don't mind if we use the Bible today, do you? If we use this Holy Scriptures? All right. Back to Mark chapter 11, verse 3. The Bible says he's still talking. Jesus is still talking. It says, and if any man say unto you, why are you doing this? What are you doing? Why are you doing this particular thing? I want you to say to them that the Lord hath need of what? Him. And straightway he will send him here. Now, this is very mind-boggling. Jesus is sending two people to go pick up some property that apparently belongs to someone else. And he says, when you go there, they're going to be tied up. Loose them. Now, I'd have been a little more comfortable if he would have said, go over to a village, you'll see a donkey and her colt standing by the gate waiting for you. <laughs> there shall no be no tie hither or thither. <laughs> they will be waiting, and they will trot along and follow you back to me. No, 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 no. He says, go up in the house. Right up on the side. You want to see, I mean, that's some whole, you know, you, you are, it's a bold move. Just, you saying just walk straight up in there, Jesus? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just, see, you can say certain stuff after you don't raise somebody from the dead. You ain't, you, ain't, you ain't with me. You ain't with me. You ain't with me. <laughs> see, after you told Lazarus, come forth and Lazarus, and he all oh, wrapped up, and he says, loose him, and, and then he's loose, and he comes. You can start saying some stuff like, go over in the village and get me a donkey with a coat. Yes, sir. <laughs> and so now, now they, they, they walk over, and, they, and the Bible says, here's what blows my mind. I, I really want you to follow me today, because I have a, when I read this, it blows, it literally blows my mind. I got to go pick up pieces and bring it back together again. And, that's, and then it blows all over again, Theo. I'm not lying to you, right? My mind is getting ready to be blown all over again. You ready for this? Look at verse 4. Verse 4 says, and they went their way and found the coat tied by the door without. Or in other words, tied by the outside door. And it was in a place where two ways met and they loosed him. When they walked over into the village, they walked up to a place where the road, there was a fork in the road. They ain't ready yet, Daniel. They ain't ready yet. The two disciples walk up and they find, they see the colt, but when they see the colt, there's a fork in the road. And they see the colt tied up with the donkey, and they go over and they begin to loose it. They, they, they loose it, they, you know what it means to say loose? I think you need to go through that when you have like a, a knot and you undo the knot? That's loose, to loosen, right? While they're doing that, the Bible says in verse 5, certain of them that stood there said unto them, why do you, what do you, loosing the coat? Why are you loosing the coat? And they said unto them, even as Jesus had commanded, and they let them go. The coat had never been sat on. Its purpose in life was to bear burdens. You ever see what they do with donkeys? They just throw all type of, you ever see a picture of a donkey? Because some of y'all act like y'all come from the city all, all day long, right? You ever see what they do? They put stuff on the back of a donkey, stuff on the front of the donkey. The donkey just look like you're just tired, just. <laughs> you ever, you, have you ever seen a donkey pick its head up? Donkey head just down, just, just, 
Go ahead, pack it on, pile it on. <laughs> and when they go ahead and they put all that, then they want to jump their big behinds up on the donkey. <laughs> oh, and, and they got the nerve to get upset and the donkey kind of get a little buckled in the knees. And, and then they want to ride the donkey. And then, then, then when it gets real serious, they want to... They want to hit the donkey. You got all your stuff, your baggage. Oh, you don't hear me yet. You, you got all your baggage on the back and the front. Then you got you. And you want to get up on the donkey. It's all about ride up, Dosamina. Ride up. And, 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 and so, uh-huh, uh-huh. Somebody from the country right around here. I'm telling you. And, and so now you're on the donkey. And now they want to ride the donkey. But, but what Jesus said was, look. Look, see, let me explain something to you. For those of you who are from Brooklyn, <laughs> you have to take your time and break the donkey in. You see, any fine country boy knows. I ain't from the country. I'm just going to tell you straight up right now. I ain't from the country. <laughs> For real. When you want to ride a four-legged beast, you have to break it first. Are you following me? You can't just jump up and ride it. And you have to break it first because that, that's all foreign. Even though that's the purpose for which it was born, it doesn't yet know or is not yet acquainted with the idea of someone sitting on top of it and guiding it through. It will, it will kick you off. Do you know that donkeys kick backwards and sideways? I didn't know about a sideways kick. I kept thinking, oh yeah, you've always been told don't stand behind a horse or a donkey. Don't, don't stand. But it can get you from the side. When it feels like it's being, someone's coming up on it and what they do, I'm going to tell you something, them donkeys real slick. Donkeys, don't, and horse, they don't do this. What they do is this. You never know. They see you. They see you coming. And you got your, and, and they got their head down like nothing ain't going on. And, they, and you can tell something serious when that tail ain't moving. They focused on you. They locked in. It's like a radar. Just locked in. They had their head down. And here you come. Right there. Right there. Right there. It's going to right there. Right there. But Jesus says, even though it hasn't yet been broken, even though it has not yet been tamed, even though it has not yet been accustomed to bearing any burden, bring it to me. I have need of it. They go and they take off the cord or the string, or the rope, whatever has this coat tied up. And they bring it to Jesus. The Bible says he got right on it. Now, let me explain to you something about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Born in Bethlehem. Spent some days down in Egypt. Came back up to a spot called Galilee. Down in the ghetto of Nazareth. All his days watching his earthly daddy work on some wood. And he was learning the carpentry trade. But around age 30, he took a trip down to the riverside. And he said, I have to suffer it now. Just let it be. Let me show them what they must do. And he went ahead and allowed John to baptize him in the river Jordan. The Bible says, and straightway. Yep, yep, yep. That same word in verse 3. The Bible says, straightway. When he came up out the water, the heavens opened up. Ah, oh, you don't hear me yet. In the middle of his baptismal ceremony, his heavenly father, while on the throne, opened up window in heaven oh yeah we got sunroofs but who got a foot roof you don't hear me yet <laughs> open up heaven look down in the river jordan and says this is woo -woo, this is my son in whom i am well please and right about then daniel right about then the holy ghost got to moving and the Holy Ghost got to move and he came out the foot, the foot roof. And saw 
coming down. The Bible says John bed record. He said, I, I never seen anything quite like this. But it looked like a plane. No, no, no. It looked like a bird. No, 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 no. It, it, it resembled uh, like a, a, a dove. It wasn't a dove. But it looked like a dove. I never seen anything quite like this. It moved so gracefully through the air. As though it has something to do with the air. Ah, uh, you don't hear me yet. Holy Spirit moved and anointed Jesus publicly to get him ready for his ministry. So when Jesus saw that little cult, one years old or under, and he gathered himself, no one did this to Jesus. You ain't got to help me on this. I made this. Let there be cults. And there was what? Coats. And so as he got on, the, the, at no point the little coat go, mm -mm. it's Jesus time. And at no time did it go, mm -mm. it's Jesus time. At no time did it kind of try to buck up, no, 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 no. It's Jesus time. If a coat can accept Jesus peacefully, humbly, and just stay still. Why do we get so much resistance in the church? Oh, let's not buck at the Holy Spirit today. Let's not shake off the blessing that's bestowed down in heaven's foot roof. Oh, yeah, y'all got something today. That little foot roof. You, you like that foot roof, don't you? Some people don't understand it. Let me explain. I see, I see it. I see it. It's glossing right over. There are some fancy cars. There are some fancy cars that if you look up where the headliner is, they have this glass enclosure. There's typically a button or two that you can press and you will hear It's gotta unlock first, it's gotta unlock. And it will slide back. And when it slides back, you can do this. <laughs> and the sun will shine through. You don't hear me yet. The sun will what? Shine through. In heaven. Heaven is above us. That's why we lift up holy hands. That's why we look to the hills from whence what? cometh our help. Our help cometh from where? And so since heaven is up above, it would do us no good for heaven to have a sunroof. <laughs> because heaven has the light of the world. The sun has to run from Jesus. You don't hear me yet. And so because heaven contains the light, it would do us no good for heaven to have a sunroof. But what heaven does in all of its this glory and all of its majesty and, and because it, heaven is so giving, heaven allows the light from on high to shine through every now and then. And because my God is omnipresent, he can suspend himself. He don't need the floor. So even though the Bible says that in heaven that the, the streets are like translucent gold, he doesn't need it to walk on. Because my God simply just is there. I am that what? I am. And so what heaven does every now and then, you'll see it at the next baptism. Heaven opens up the heavenly floor. That's how Isaiah was able to see in in the first place. Isaiah chapter 6. He says the door in heaven it opened up. What he meant was the floor roof. And I saw God sitting upon the throne with no floor. Ah, uh, you don't hear me yet. So in heaven, God allows the bottom just to open up so he can see and speak and commune with his children. Jesus 
sat upon the beast. And, and, and when he sat upon the beast, the Bible says, as they were making their descent at the Mount of Olives, disciples began to take down palms, um, branches from the palm trees. And they began to, to lay out, to lay out a, a pathway for Jesus to ride on. The Messiah is coming. Hosanna in the highest. And, and so they began to lay, then they took off their robes and their, their little garments and they began to put it across the donkey and, and began to say, yes, yes, this is our king. Jesus rode in, proclaiming himself to be the king of kings, Lord of lords. They didn't understand his true kingdom. They thought if he can raise people from the dead, surely he can help us conquer the Romans. Jesus says, my kingdom is not of this world. I came for one purpose, to save you. Next week, around by the end of the week, I'm going to die for you. They didn't get it. Let's conquer right now, Jesus. But that's not why I came here today. I came here to deal with two issues. The first issue is when they found the colt, the colt was tied up. In order to be used, the colt had to be untied. Jesus says, go find the colt. And tell them, if anyone asks you, the Lord hath need of him. There may be someone here today. You don't quite know what it is. But you feel the Holy Spirit saying, come on, I, I, I need you. The Lord says, in order for me to use you, I have to untie you. Listen to me carefully. You cannot untie yourself. Listen to me carefully. The colt couldn't untie himself. But Jesus sent down two of his disciples to untie the colt. Now, if anyone was to challenge them, he says, let them know the Lord hath need of him. There are still ministering spirits, Paul says. In Hebrews chapter 1, he says, are they not all ministering spirits sent forth but to minister? God sends angels, even today, to loose you from your situation. Let me tell you how I know. Remember the intercessory prayer? I don't know this man. Do you know me? Mm -mm. We've never met other than being on the stage. He said, place whatever that thing is in that box. He used the word loose. Now, he said loose yourself. You just have to loose yourself. Put it in the box. And I'm here today to tell you, yeah, because he needs you. Listen to me carefully. It's not that you have power to loose yourself of any situation that you're in. But through faith, you don't hear me yet. Through faith that is on that box. I don't know if you close your eyes, but I saw the box. Through faith, you could say, Lord, loose me. This thing is dragging me down. Loose me. This thing is causing me to be unable to move. Loose me. This thing is causing me to be depressed. Loose me. This thing is giving me a false sense of security. Loose me. Lord, I need you to loose me because you can't do it. The Lord sends angels ready to untie the knot of whatever it is you may be dealing with. And if anyone is to ask why, 
the Lord hath need of him. But I got some good news for you. You see, sometimes in life, it's hard to turn it over to Jesus. You have no idea what he's going to do with it. You have no idea what's going to happen with your life if you just turn it all over to Jesus. I told you that this story is recorded in all four Gospels. But our scripture text was focusing strictly with Mark. Now, as you read John's account, John does not give you the specifics as to what Jesus says. He just tells you about the event. Are you with me? We read Matthew's account. Matthew speaks of both. The donkey and the colt. Luke. Luke doesn't break it down quite like this. Because only here in Mark. Does Mark say. Why do ye this? Say that the Lord hath need of him. Semicolon. And straightway. He will send him hither. I must admit, when I first read this over the years, I thought it meant that tell them the Lord has need of the cult. And I thought he was talking to the disciples when he says, and if you, when you tell them that immediately or straightway, they'll send the cult and the donkey to me. When I went back and examined the original Greek and I looked at the interpretation thereof, what it means is tell him that the Lord hath need of him and immediately after I'm done, I'll send it right back. Why does that make any sense? Well, what's the big deal? Fine, they'll send it back. Then what? That cult would never be the same. Jesus sat on it. Jesus touched it. Jesus breathed on it. Jesus maybe even spoke over it. It came in contact with Jesus, the creator the sustainer, the redeemer, it came in contact with Jesus. It will never be the same. Straightway, immediately, once I'm done with it, once I complete the mission for this thing, I'll send it back to you. Well, where do you get that from? He doesn't want to keep it. Because my Savior went to the cross all by himself. No will for pets. He didn't designate, now mother, you can have the coat that I got. He went to Calvary's Hill all by himself. Not a dime to his name. In the book of Luke, chapter 5, you'll find there Jesus calling some disciples. Peter in particular. Let me give you the backdrop on this real quick. We're going to wrap this up. Is that all right? Jesus is preaching. And while he's preaching, people just keep coming and coming and coming. And they back him up to the seaside. He sees two ships. I'm not making it up. It's in there. He sees two ships and he picks one of those two. And he says, do me a favor. By this time, he's speaking to Peter, and he and Peter don't know each other because they haven't spoken before. He says, do me a favor. Push out the ship so I can just sit in your ship a little bit so I can preach from here. I don't have a pulpit. They haven't given me a church. I haven't gotten a call yet for, to, to go pastor a church. So just let me sit in your ship, and I'll, I'll preach out to the people. And he began to preach, and he preached all day long. When he got done preaching, he turned to Peter and said, okay, now take the ship and, and, and go out a little further and drop your net. Peter said, Master, with all due respect, 
I enjoyed the sermon. Some good preaching. You know, we, we like to rate the preacher sometimes. You know how we do. Oh, that's some good preaching. That's, that's that meat on the bones type of preaching. That's a good old Adventist preaching. You know how we do. Peter said, that's a good sermon. But I, I just want to let you know, I, I, I've been fishing all night long. And so we didn't catch anything. But hey, if you insist I go out, fine, I'll go out. And he goes out again. The Bible says when he goes out, the Bible says here, look here in verse 6. Luke chapter 5, verse 6. The Bible says, and when they had done this, or when they had this done, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes, and their net broke. Jesus doesn't take anything and return it the same. He borrowed their boat to preach a sermon. The Peter said it. We didn't catch anything. The whole day was a wash. We didn't make any money. Jesus said, that's all right. Let me use your boat. I have need of it today. I preached up a sermon. Then when I got done preaching, I said, now, Peter, you can go ahead. Go out and cast out your net. We've already done this. Even you did, you did it your way, Peter. Do it my way. They had a multitude of fishes. Best day the business ever saw. But I got another one for you. He never leaves. He never leaves it the same. When he asks you for something, he says, I have need of it. He'll never leave it the same. My Savior goes up to Calvary's hill. He didn't invest in a tombstone. He didn't invest in a tomb or a sepulcher. No, 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 no. All he did was come to die. He just needed a place to rest for three days. Bible says Joseph of Arimathea. Nicodemus came and they, they had aloe and myrrh and, and they, they anointed his body and they wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and they wrapped his head in a clean linen napkin and they, they took his body and brought it to a sepulcher whereon had never been used. Remember that cult? No man ever sat on that cult before, before Jesus. That sepulcher, that tomb, Nobody had ever been laid in there before. It had never been used. And Jesus says, I have need of it for three days. And I'll return it in better condition than anyone could ever imagine. What tomb do you know has ever brought forth life? But not just, not just, not just, not just life. But life more abundantly, the life of the King and Savior of the world, Jesus. If Jesus can do that with a tomb marked for death, what can he do for you? I have need of you, he says. I don't care what's got you tied up. I don't even want you trying to loose yourself. I send angels to loosen you up. And if anyone says, what are you doing to Theo? Why, why, why are you bothering Theo? What, what, what's going on? If the devil himself comes up and says, leave Theo alone. Angels will rebuke and say, the Lord has need of him. You don't hear him yet. And there's nothing better than having somebody stand up for you. But you can't stand for yourself. You imagine the devil walking up and angels standing up and saying, the Lord has need of him. In other words, Jesus. So today. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what things are plaguing and troubling you. But I want you to know one thing. He hath need of you. He hath need of you. But you have to be willing to let him have you. He's not going to take you and, and make you worse off than you are now you're going to be glorified through Christ you're going to be held in a different light because of Christ people will look at 
you would know you must have been in contact with something holy and divine he is going to allow you to look differently to be viewed differently not that you will be exalted but that Jesus Christ will continually be exalted because you allowed him to have need of you now what does that mean he has need of you he came and died but what good is his death if you don't partake of that gift he can't force it on you he can only die and say hey it's yours but it's up to you to say Lord you say you need me I need you I need you more than ever before battling all types of things on my own and now Lord I need you I can't even get myself out of this mess I'm not preaching to you I'm speaking with you about me too I can't untie myself I, I can't un I'm entangled I, I can't get it off me the Lord says hold still I sent down angels to loose you I have need of you Jason I want you just to if we can sing this song, just one stanza. And after we sing this, I want you just to examine, Lord, whatever it is that you still held on to and didn't put in that box, whatever that thing is that maybe it happened this week, maybe it's been happening over the past year, even those things that you think are good, ask the Lord, just take me, Lord take me and whatever you say needs to be loosened just loosen it and allow me to come back better than I was before because you on your own you you can't make it one stanza and when we sing this I just want you to just think about some things in your life and we're gonna come back and have prayer You gave me my hands to reach out to man, to show him your love and your perfect plan. You gave me my ears, I can hear. afternoon I want you to understand that when that cult came with his mother it was all right that they come together but the Lord says I have need of the cult that's what I'm gonna work with right now so this afternoon if you say Lord I, I want you to work with me just whatever it may be and understand it doesn't mean that your, your life is as broken down as mine it doesn't mean that your life is, is, is as depressed and, and miserable as mine you're simply saying Lord I want to give you me so when you return me back I'll be better than I was before and I want to show your glory in my life Lord just take me I'm available 
my storage is empty, Lord. And if my storage is not empty, I want you to loose me of it. I want you to empty out my storage. We're going to do it today. We're going to do it today. We're going to do it today. Now, here's what we're going to do. Because I understand, much like this story told us, sometimes you, it's hard to make the trip on your own. Is that all right? And so, although Mama Donkey had to walk with Colt, when Jesus got it in his hands, she was fine and secure. She didn't resist or fight Jesus. She let him take him because she knew he was in safe hands. He's in good hands now. So, uh, what I'm going to ask you to do, if there's anyone here that says, Lord, I I'm available. And I want to offer myself to you. And I want you to take me and do whatever you need to do. And I know I'll be returned in better shape. You can slip your hand up. I'll come get you. We'll walk down together. If there's anyone here that says, Lord, I, I want you to do for me what only you can do. Return me in a better condition than I ever was when I walked through that door. Peter had an empty ship. Come with me. Peter had an empty ship. Come with me. We're going to pray on this thing today. The Lord says, I, I got you. God bless you. They're coming. Church is praying. Church is praying. Church is praying. This is serious time. Who would have known that a coat that was even, wasn't even a year old, the Lord could have need and find use for it? Surely he can do it for you. Jesus says, give me an empty tomb marked for death. I can use it. I can use it for my name's honor and glory. He can take a coat that has not been broken yet. He can take a coat that's never been ridden yet, is not acquainted to this. Listen to me carefully, church. Here's what I mean, young people and older people alike. The Lord says the coat, it wasn't used yet. It had no idea what would happen in the hands of Jesus. But, but, but here's the thing. It, no one had, had, had put a burden on the coat yet. No one had ridden it yet. It had not yet been used. And someone may be looking at you and saying, you don't really have any experience with Jesus yet. You might as well stay in your seat. You don't even really understand what this call is all about. This appeal, it may not relate to you because... See, you have to go to church for a while first, and you have to understand all 28 fundamental beliefs and, and the 2300 day prophecy and the 1260 days, and, and you really need to understand all these things first before God can use you. And so, but I'm here to tell you a cult that was not yet a year old is forever remembered. Don't let anyone tell you you can't be used yet. But better than that, don't let anyone tell you he doesn't have need for you. Listen to me carefully. Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam says he wants you. And every 18-year-old young man has to register with selected services. Because Uncle Sam says he wants you. But Jesus says, I don't want you. I need you. Is that something? Gee, I don't just want you. I need you. Yes, I have a desire for you, but, but I need you. I need you in order to make this plan of salvation complete. I did my part, but I need you now to do yours. Is there anyone else? Is there anyone else before we close? He says, I need you in order to complete this plan of salvation. I need you to trust me. Do you trust him? Do you trust him with all of your secrets? Do you trust him with your burdens? Do you trust him? Do you trust him with all of your, all of your cares? There are people here, lost loved ones, don't know how they're going to make it through. The Lord says, do you trust me? Do you trust me? I have, I have need for you. Anyone else before we close? I'm not preaching to you now. The Holy Spirit just says linger. There's someone else here that needs to trust me. Trust me that I'll loose you from whatever it is. Trust me that I'll return you better than you were ever 
before you walked in here. Trust me. Trust me. Just trust me this once. Jesus says, just trust me. Just this once. God bless you. It's still coming. You're still praying, church. Holy Spirit says, just trust me. If you trust me, I won't disappoint you. If you trust me, I'll restore you. If you trust me, I'll renew your strength. If you trust me, I'll give you faith that you know not of. If you just trust me, just this once, I have need for you. I don't know about you, but people always say it's good to feel wanted. Yeah, yeah. But it's so much better to know that you're needed. He needs me. Jesus, God with the foot roof, needs me. Jesus, the one who called something out of nothing, needs me. Jesus, you need me. I need you, Jason. I need your message of hope. Why do you need me? Because you're special to me. I made you because I need you. Is there anybody else before we close? You're standing by that door. You're tied up like that coat. You're tied up by that coat. You're standing right there at the fork in the road. You don't know whether you should go left or go right. Don't make any decisions, but allow the Holy Spirit to move you right now. Loose you and move you and bring you up front. Anybody else? At the fork in the road. Remember the Bible said, at the place where the two roads meet. That's where the cult was. In the valley of decision. Not sure whether it's going to go left or go right. Had no idea who the first rider was going to be. Had no idea what the burden was going to feel like. But Jesus says, take my yoke upon you. Anybody else? Anybody else before we close? You're at the fork in the road. You're standing by the door tied up. Angels are coming to loose you right now. But you have to trust them. You have to trust them with it. He says, I'll return it back better than it ever was before. You have to trust them. You have to trust them. We're closing. We're closing. We're closing. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you so very much. Dear Lord, we have come today and we We've learned, dear Father, that you have need of us. You need us. And you have sent angels to loosen us from our situation. Dear Lord, that your children are here and there are some, dear Father, they're weeping, dear Lord, because now they understand just how much you love them. And they have this stuff, dear Father, that the devil has laid upon them. And they ask you, oh Lord, just take it, dear Father, and return me better than I ever was before. Dear God, there are those who have come, and dear Father, you know every situation. Dear Lord, you know every condition before you today. Dear God, you know every family situation. You know every work situation, all school situation. Dear Father, you know the church situation they're dealing with. Each person standing here today is asking you, oh Lord, just take me, oh God. Take me, I trust you. Take me, I trust you. Take me, I trust you. That you will return me better than I ever was before. So dear Lord, today we... We say, Lord, we're available to you. Dear Father, our storage, some of us, our storage is empty. Others of us, dear Father, we still have some baggage and we ask you, oh Lord, empty us of ourselves. Dear God, there's some stuff in our lives that other people have thrown on our backs. There are burdens, dear Father, that we have inherited from other people and other situations that are not ours. Dear God, I'm begging you now, take that thing off of us right now.
to us, oh Lord. Take off that burden that the devil has laid on us. Allow us, dear God, to just simply bear you. Help us to hold you up at all times, oh Jesus. Dear Lord, I'm begging you now. That which you did with a borrowed boat. Do for us, oh Lord. Bless it. Dear God, that which you did with a, with a colt that was tied up. Do it for us, oh Lord. Let us be remembered when you return again. Dear Father, that which you did with a borrowed tomb that was marked for death. Dear Father, we stand here as living souls and testimonies of your sustaining power. Surely you can do much more for us than you did for a dead tomb. Jesus, restore us, I beg you. Revive us. Oh, Lord, care for us as only you can. I thank you, dear Lord, for needing us. I thank you, dear Lord, for needing us, but we would dare not leave this prayer without realizing we need you. Jesus, we need you every hour. Oh, Lord, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Oh, Lord Jesus, we need thee every hour. I beg you, oh God, Help us to desire you. Help us to do more than just want you. Help us to need you. Help us to need to praise you. Help us to need to worship you. Help us to need to pray to you. Help us to need to seek you. Help us to need to serve you. Help us to need to stand for you. Help us to need to work for you. Help us to need, oh God, help us to need you, Jesus. Help us right now. Dear God, there are those who have come who have not yet, dear God, made a decision to follow you all the way. Dear Father, they have not yet been baptized, but after they heard about what you do at baptisms, how you open up heaven, how you speak for your child, how you give them a special anointing right now today they make up in their mind dear father that they too want to be baptized and they signify this by raising their hand is there anyone today that says lord i want to give my life to you i want to be baptized slip your hand in the air slip your hand in the air if you just say lord i want to be baptized i want to give my life to you i have need of you is there anyone Lord, as we close this prayer, we thank you. Dear Lord, we praise your name. Dear Father, while there may be someone standing at the fork in the road, whether they should give their life to Jesus or keep it the way it is. Understanding, dear Lord, they keep it the way it is. They've given it to Satan. But if they give it to you, Jesus, You'll return it to them in so much better condition. Better than it ever was before. You'll give them life and give it to them more abundantly. Dear Lord, trouble them, I beg you. Don't allow them to leave today comfortable with the decision not to follow you. But may they leave today saying, Lord, I give it all to you. I'm available, dear Father to receive additional studies so I can learn more about you so I can be baptized and saved when you come again. Dear Lord, I beg you, be with your people. Seal us up, I beg you. Dear Father, I pray that you'll just take us and send protective covering over us. That we may be able to withstand the hands, dear Father, and the darts and the plots of the devil in that day. I beg you, O oh Lord, be with your children, I pray. Bless us and keep us. And most importantly, dear Lord, save us when you come again. And teach us, dear God, how to need you. I pray these things through the mighty name of Jesus. Let the church say amen and amen.